To anyone who's never seen the inside of a Game Master screen, it can seem like a mystery, but you're a GM now, so it's time to learn the secret. Welcome back, fellow Game Masters, to the Daily D20, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing, where I'm helping you build your world and master your game, and I'm Richard Quiner. Of course, if you like what you see here on the channel, I invite you to subscribe for videos every single day. When I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons and I would see the Dungeon Master screen, I would think it was just a, a wall, a block, so I couldn't see the Dungeon Master's notes. But once I got a look behind it, it all came clear why this thing is actually useful, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on my own. So let's take a look behind the Game Master screen and find out what it's really all about. These Game Master screens are chock full of information, rules, plans, other tables of other data that a Game Master can use to run their game more efficiently. Now when you start looking into Game Master screens for your own use, there are several different options you can choose from, including one that doesn't really cost a whole lot at all. But I do want to break down some of the official Game Master screens out there, mainly one from Wizards of the Coast, the publishers of Dungeons & Dragons. They have one called the Dungeon Master Screen Reincarnated, that is, it is another newer version of their previous screen, and it has a ton of information that any Dungeon Master could want to use in their game. Normally, the Dungeon Master Screen Reincarnated runs $10 to $20 on Amazon, depending on which store or seller you pick it from because you know how Amazon has those different sellers for different products, but if you pick wisely, you can probably pick this thing up for about 10 bucks. What do you actually get on the inside of this screen? Well, first you're gonna get a listing of common actions that players can take, so you, the Dungeon Master, can understand what the players are trying to do and maybe even help the players make the decisions in combat situations. It just gives a nice list of the common actions that they can do. It also includes a listing of statuses, such as incapacitated or paralyzed, and the definition of those statuses as per the Dungeon and Dragons rules. So if a player or an NPC becomes affected by any of those statuses, you have it clearly written out for you and you can know what you're talking about in the game in the moment. This DM screen reincarnated also has a small listing of hard to remember rules, such as what defines a long jump or a high jump. There are these kind of rules that they fly under the radar until you need them in the game situation. And then you think, oh, I should have studied that and remembered that. But with this screen, you have it right in front of your face. It also includes a handy guide for setting difficulty ratings for different challenges or different actions that the players might want to do, such as picking a lock or breaking down a door. It kind of guides you through the process. So even if you haven't experienced a certain action or situation before, the DM screen can actually help you decide how difficult it should be for your players. It also includes several inanimate objects and the hit point value of those objects. So if a player is trying to break open a chest or break down a door, you can assign an actual hit point value to that object, and then the players can reach that hit point value before they actually break it. So it just adds a little more gameplay mechanics into it if that's what you choose to do, but it lists them out according to the Dungeons & Dragons rules. And a last very useful piece of information on this screen are the listing of services and commodities in the Dungeons & Dragons worlds that players may need to encounter, such as repairing weapons and items, getting an inn for the night, food costs, rations, getting a new saddle for their horse, or changing horseshoes. These kind of services and commodities that are very common in the world of Dungeons & Dragons that you might not even think about as a Dungeon Master when you're playing the game until one of your players asks about it. Now that is all included in the Dungeon Master screen reincarnated, but there are plenty of other options. My Dungeon Master screen was a third-party non-Dungeons & Dragons product that I found on Amazon. I will leave a link in the description. It cost me about $14, and it's pretty sturdy. It's a hard, like a, it's like a three-ring binder material that's pretty good. But the great thing about it is each side of the panel is customizable, so what I actually did was find some PDFs that someone had created with a bunch of different rules, so I was able to customize what information is actually in this DM screen, so I could use it for my own games and put in the information that I need. So my DM screen basically includes everything from the DM screen reincarnated, plus another section on the cost of weapons and armor, and even more of a breakdown of the different abilities checks that people might make, or the use of the ability scores in the game, such as strength and dexterity. So then, if I get in a moment where I'm playing the game and I have a brain fart, I can look it up and see what I need to remember for that moment. And if the players need to go shopping, I have an easy breakdown of the cost of various items in the Dungeons & Dragons worlds, 
as directed by the game creators. Another thing I like to do with my Game Master screen is put custom information for each campaign. So I will create a list of NPCs or locations that the players might want to go and just tape them inside my DM screen. If in case the players do decide to talk to some NPC, I am ready and I have a name ready to go. I will also do the same with different I'll also do the same with different locations, maybe some buildings that might be included in a town that they're in, and I'll also include a small table of random encounters. If the game feels like it's going slow and people the players need a little oom for a little combat situation, I'll have a list of combat or some sort of random thing that they will encounter in the game available so I can just roll a die and pick one off of the cheat and run it at the game. And the last extra bit of information I like to keep is a list of random treasures that the players can loot off of dead bodies or find in various holes in the ground or treasure chests that they may find in a secluded room in the top corner of a tower. Now I've talked to you about the DM screen reincarnated and I showed you my DM screen which is not a official Wizards of the Coast product but the real question is do you need one of these 10 to 20 dollar GM screens just to play your game and the answer is absolutely not. Go out, get a three ring binder for a couple dollars, and already you have two panels of a DM screen. You don't need four panels, like most have, in order to give you the information you need. Just set up a, a three ring binder, kind of stand it up in front of you, put some paper in there with the information that you need for your game, and you're ready to go. I would say if you're a new GM and you're just getting started, save your money, don't go buy a GM screen right away. Wait until you know the information you'll need, then find a GM screen that works for your purposes in the game. Every Game Master is different, every Game Master screen is a little different, so keep that in mind, your GM screen will be different than others and that is perfectly fine as long as it works for you. So the question of the day is would you prefer a Wizards of the Coast release DM screen or something third party that you can customize for yourself? And what specific rules would you enjoy having right in front of you while running your games? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button below, and if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button for more videos every day. I've been Richard Quiner, thank you for watching.